Pat back with Pat's two cents. Timothy, 2 Timothy, chapter 3, starting at verses 1 through 7. This know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Now let me stop right there and add Pat's two cents. We are seeing between the storms, the shootings, people going cuckoo, being demon-possessed, being uh, turned into, into present-day zombies through these drugs like K2 and all this crazy mess that, that is out on the streets. I mean, people just going off. We already know there is an onslaught. The... The demons are ravaging society right now. Anyway, let me go back to the verse. This know that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For when men, excuse me, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Pat's two cents. Let me interject right after that first sentence. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Selfie. Ding. Selfie. Selfie. Hey, let's do a selfie, you guys. Anyway. And disobedient to parents? Boy, that really broke loose when somebody got the courts to stop Bibles in school, prayer in school. Everything that they do to try to remove God from the picture cracks the door open and then Satan takes his boot, kicks the door wide open, and sends another onslaught of demons onto society. While society says, come on in and set a spell. Anything but God. Hallelujah. Oh, don't get me started on that. Let me read again. Verse 2. For men shall be lovers of themselves. Mm, mm, mm covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Pat love with Pat's two cents. If you don't know what that means, that means homosexuality is considered not natural. Anyway, without natural affection, Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good. Now, let me go back real quick, Pat's two cents. You know what I see happening in this society? College men, working men, family men being sent to prison for years and years and years, just thrown under the bus. Because they need numbers and they make money with the more they get. So they rank up all of these charges for warrants for traffic violations. It is treacherous out there, y'all. Okay. Let's read that again. Without natural affection, we know what that means. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. Now, for those of you who don't know what incontinent means, Pat's two cents again, that means lack of self-control. Some people label that bipolar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I label it adult temper tantrums. You go off, you just go off. You just ruin everything around you. No self-control. Can't control the mouth. Can't control the temper. Can't control your actions. Totally out of control incontinent messing all over yourself and everybody else back to the word fierce 
despisers of those that are good. Mm. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, Ooh, more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts. Divers simply means different, with different types of lust. Verse 7. Ever learning, taking notes in church, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. What's Pat's two cents? What's up with that? Now, is that not what's happening in this day and age? We are truly in the last days. There are born again Christians that would rather pay money to a psychic a medium, a tarot card reader, then ask God for free. The one who knows. Because we are an instant society. We want our answers now. And see, God ain't going to be rushed by nobody. So we think it's more effective to go to the dark side to get a, a, an answer quick, fast, in a hurry. But we got to fork out the ducats to get that baby. <laughs> you got folks running around witnessing for the Lord can't even stop cussing. Incontinent, totally out of control. Cussing while they witnessing for the Lord. What is that? The Bible says in James chapter 3, out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing? This ought not to be. Oh, but folks do it anyway. Because they got to be me. I got to be me. I got to do it my way. And me, myself, and I, I got my way. You got your way. I do me. You do you. But the Bible says, how can both come out of the same mouth? It's a contradiction of terms. Okay. Cussing is the devil's language, not God's. So you're going to glorify God with the devil's language? Really? Okay. In this day and age, we have got to be extra prayerful, extra watchful, and totally discerning. When you're crossing the street getting ready to go into a building, it pays nowadays to stop and say, Lord, while I'm walking across the street, tell me if I need to go in that building. Is it safe? Or should I wait a couple of hours? It pays to start asking those questions in these perilous times when people decide to pull out their little bazookas and their little shotguns and their 45s and their rifles and whatever else they got in their arsenal. That bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Ooh, that one died real quick. Ooh, did you see how that one died? Hmm. No love. No remorse. Just sociopathic. Just no conscience whatsoever. Last days, not only perilous times, but perilous people. Don't be one of those perilous ones. See, you may be raising hell on earth, but when you're done, you will have hell to pay throughout eternity. Okay, now. Now that we've had it our way, I've got to be me. I want it my way. Yeah, well, listen. 
what you don't get is that you are either going to be an answer to the problem or you're going to contribute to the problem. And any of you parents who are willing to take your children and sit them down in front of a drag queen while they talk about the nastiness of their lifestyle. And if you're okay with it, baby, you need your head examined. You need something examined. If you're okay with it and you go to church too, I ask you what church, what spirit is leading that church? It can't be the Bible they're teaching. Because in Old and New Testament, it makes that thing very clear. See, you can't uh, marry God and have the devil over for dinner every day. You can't have it both ways. Jesus said, you've got to serve man or God, God or mammon. You've got to make a choice. You can't serve two masters. You can't have God by day and the devil by night. Hallelujah. Hey, baby, baby. Glory to God. Come on over here and slip by my place tonight. Yeah. What is that? You know the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You wonder why we're in perilous times. Folks can't make up their mind. They don't know whether they're in, they're out, whether they're going to be good, whether they're going to be righteous, whether they're going to be evil, whether they want to do right, whether they want to do wrong. It's like one way this moment, the next way. They're just driven by whatever force of wind comes about. We are in perilous times because I would say 75% of society does not have their mind made up. They really don't know who they're serving. And when you serve self and you think, well, I'm not serving God and I'm not serving the devil, I'm not t- it's me. Then guess what? You're serving the devil because that's his way, not God. Either way, you're going to serve somebody. 